There are so many stories of strange creatures, cryptids, and terrifying monsters from all around the world. I've always wanted to make a series devoted to individual countries, so welcome to the strange creatures of Sweden. Many of the creatures that appear today will also be very common in other Scandinavian countries, so you can look at today's episode as a Scandinavian special. Before we go any further, a quick word from today's awesome sponsor HelloFresh. Nothing really beats a home-cooked meal, but deciding what to eat, buying the ingredients, preparing and cooking the meal for those with a busy schedule can be difficult to do several times a week. With HelloFresh, you can have a meal kit that includes fresh ingredients and cooking instructions sent directly to your door. Simply follow the instructions provided and you have access to all sorts of tasty meals within 30 minutes, less time than you'd spend in the grocery store. Each week there are new recipes to choose from, with low carb, low fat and vegetarian options if needed. The meal kits are sent in almost entirely recyclable packaging, so you can even reduce your carbon footprint. So I've been using HelloFresh for a few weeks now, and I've been extremely pleased with what I received and the amount of time I've been able to save. Some of my favourite meals so far were the teriyaki chicken with rice, the honey roasted duck with mashed potatoes, and the spicy creamy Cajun pasta. You may be surprised to know that I'm no Gordon Ramsay, but these meals look and taste great. You also don't have to be a Michelin star chef to make them. So if you'd like to try HelloFresh for yourself, you can visit HelloFresh.com and use code MYTHOLOGY14 to receive 14 free meals as well as free shipping. So give it a try and let me know which meals are your favourite. We begin with the not so pleasant Draga. The Draga are animated corpses or revenants that can be found in burial mounds guarding treasure. Step into the wrong tomb or try and steal something shiny and you may wake a Draga or two. In Swedish they are simply referred to as Drog, which means someone pale and dim-witted who drags themselves along. They are also described as corporeal ghosts and vampires. The zombie comparison can be made as it's said you can tell when a droga is near, because the smell of decay is unbearable. Their appearance is grotesque and necrotic. At times they can be gaunt with exposed and broken bones. Towards the end of the 19th century they were also considered a type of vampire. Not because of the need to feed off others to sustain themselves, but because their attacks could turn their victims into their own kind. There are brief mentions of outbreaks and epidemics in the old sagas. As well as being super strong, they could shapeshift, control the weather, and even invade someone's dream, leaving behind a cursed object, ensuring the victim's bad fortune and even death. All of this makes being hunted by a Draga a very unpleasant experience. The Skogsroa in Swedish, or the Holder in other parts of Scandinavia, is a type of forest nymph. Often referred to as the Mistress of the Forest, this entity is known for its seductive but also deadly nature. She takes the form of a petite and beautiful woman with a kind and friendly demeanour. Face on, they appear rather normal, but from behind they have a large hollow chasm in their back, as well as a tail. Those unfortunate enough to interact with these forest nymphs are never the same. Many are simply never seen again, and the ones who do return are said to be a shell of themselves an introvert or a hermit. Those who lay with the Skogsroa are said to leave behind their souls for her keeping. One of the more disturbing sets of creatures on today's list is the Myling. These are reanimated corpses or spirits of children who had passed away. 
They are forced to roam the earth until their dying wish has been fulfilled. Normally this means the desire for a proper burial. These spirits can range from young children to newborns and even unborn children, which makes this legend even more disturbing. The miling exists when a mother kills an unwanted child and hides her crime. They can be heard at night singing their horrifying song, revealing their mother's crime to all those who will listen. As many of these murders happened shortly after birth, these children were never baptized or given a proper burial, and thus, according to the church, they could never rest. The way to appease them is by giving them a name, finding their corpse and burying them in holy soil. Because of the violent nature of their deaths, the Miling were feared and considered vengeful spirits. If you were chosen by a Miling to help find their body and bury them, you had no real choice. Failing to do so would result in your death. The Nekun were water spirits that lured children and women down rivers and lakes with enchanting songs played on a violin. They often appeared as a man with a violin, but it's thought that they had no true shape or form. They could shapeshift into a box of treasure floating on the water's surface, a beautiful woman, or even an animal. A common form was a horse, which is why they may be referred to as brook horse or river horse. The most common form the Necken spirit takes in Sweden is as a man playing a musical instrument, who also happens to be naked sometimes. Not all Necken were malevolent or evil, as there are stories of them living on land and integrating into society for short periods of time, before eventually returning to the water. There are also tales of Nekken teaching others how to play the violin or fiddle, but some are driven completely insane by the music. The evil Nekken would target unbaptized children and pregnant women with their songs, but they would also drown young men as well, so I guess no one was safe. The song played is so enchanting that you forget where you are. Before you realize, you're in the water, about to drown yourself. Similar to creatures such as the Grendilo or the Kelpie, these tales were likely created to keep children away from dangerous rivers and lakes. The Mare or Mara is an entity that has appeared throughout Europe under many different names. It is a spirit that rides on your chest while you sleep and brings you nightmares, a sleep paralysis monster. The Mara would ride horses during the night, leaving the owners confused as to why they were tired and sweaty in the morning. Once the horses were exhausted, they would find sleeping men, entangle them with their hair, and begin to invade their dreams until they became nightmares. As well as women, they could also take the form of any animal they desire making them rather tricky to identify. For our last set of creatures, I will pass you over to today's guest, artist and Swedish native, Mando, who can share some of her own experiences and stories. Hi, my name is Mando and I'm an artist and YouTuber from Northern Sweden. I've been on this channel before as an artist and animator, but today I'm here to talk to you about my local mythology. The winters here are long and dark, so it's understandable that the people living here have been doing their best to please the spirits of nature. My grandmother have told me so many stories. One is about a magic you can do with a ball of yarn, and she always just mentioned it, so for this very video I, I decided to ask my grandmother what is up with the ball of yarn? And it's about a creature called Baran. It goes by many names, troll hair, milk hair, in English it is known as a troll cat. And you make this creature with nine types of yarn, blood from your left pinky, and when you say a spell, your Baran will come alive and it will roll off to steal milk and fortune from your neighbors. <laughs> 
But coming from a long line of farmers, the creature I feel most closely connected to is the Vitra. The stories differ depending on where you're from, but here they are described much like humans, living like my grandmother did when she was a child, self-sustainably and farming their critters. They can choose if they want to be seen by humans or not, and at least here they are described to be as really, really small. Apparently I saw one when I was a child, a pale woman looking at me from behind the leg of a chair. You're not really supposed to tell anyone if you saw them though, so... I hope it's okay. <laughs> you don't want to get on the Vitra's bad side. Anytime you pour water or something outside, or if you're out camping and you pee outside, you have to warn the Vitra, because who would want to get that in on their head, you know? If they like you, they can help you, but... If you anger them, they can cast sickness on you. My mother experienced this once. She was camping with a friend and when they had set up camp, they put all their belongings in a bag, inside another bag, inside a backpack, and hung it high in a tree to protect it from wild animals. That evening, when they went to sleep, they opened some bottles, but they could never find the bottle caps again, no matter how much they searched. The next morning, when my mother woke, her eyes were itchy and swollen, and she said they were full of sand as if she hadn't slept in a long time. Her friend was already up, so she went outside to look for her, and when she saw her, her face were completely red, as if she was burned by the sun. So they packed up and went home, and as they were unpacking in my grandmother's kitchen, suddenly they found the bottle caps. They had been pressed into each other so hard they couldn't be separated, and they found them inside the bag, inside the bag, inside the backpack. And they could not figure out how they could have ended up there. But my grandmother looked at them and she said, were there little trails on the ground? And they said, yeah, there were some animal trails there. But my grandmother said, it was bitter trails and you have angered the vitra. And they obviously messed with you with their bottle caps. <laughs> Make of that story what you will. <laughs> in today's day and age, it's not many who believes in or even knows about the Vitra, but my grandmother have taught me to respect them, and I still do that. Anytime I pour something out, I say, watch out, people of the underworld. Better be on the safe side. A huge thanks to Mando for the artwork in this video, and especially for sharing her own stories and experiences with us. If you would like to see more of Mando, she does have her own channel called Heart Full of Forest, which focuses on art, nature, culture, and minimal living. I'll link one of Mando's videos down below so you can check it out. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see this series continue, then let me know which country you want to see next. As always, I've been your host, Mythology and Fiction Explained.